episode 33 of the Long Haul Podcast. I'm Nine, joined by Kerry, as always. How is life, dude? Hey, my dude. Having life a good week? Is, <laughs> uh, filled with work. Other than that, same stuff. Work day. and Destiny 2 grinding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, more or less, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, all right, another week, another Monday. So that the, the recurrent topic of the long haul podcast. Uh, better to have recurrent Mondays than to uh, not have anything, as as it was previously. But uh, yeah, basically Valve chooses the topic for us now. Until until we get our hands on the game, we're just gonna be talking about whatever the the development team wants. <laughs> Um, this week, it so happens that uh, the topic will be uh, a repeat of last week, so it will be a continuation of the shop discussion. And uh, before before we even start about anything containing contained in the topic, I want to just say, man, this is by far the best art until now in the, in the moon days. Because they made the fucking Grivel eat the mall, dude. Look, he's, saliv he's, he's drooling all over the gold, man. He's so happy. Look at him. And from here on, he will be called Omnom. And Omnom? All right, I like that. <laughs> Omnom. I hope Omnom keep, keeps coming back because he's he seems like he's a cool Grivel. Um, I wonder if there's going to be any Grivels in Artifact. Is, maybe this is some subtle hint. <laughs> no, they already showed it that, that there's going to be Grievous. Oh yeah, there's the one one we said that last week. That's right. Yeah. That's right. With the with the placeholder art. Cool. All right. Uh, if Valve is Valve, I'm probably going to make a Grievous of each color or something. <laughs> yeah, presumably. We'll see. Uh, it might. They might also implement some Grievous cosmetics. Maybe you can. Maybe you can buy something to have Grievous instead of imps on your deck. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so this week's post is called Let's Shop Continued. It's basically a, a rework of last week's uh, post and adds some more information that was obviously missing. And they start off obviously by saying that there was a lack of clarity in our previous discussion and that caused some confusion. And I mean, I don't know what they were expecting because they really there was really a lot of information that was not clear and there was also a lot of information that was missing but i think they did a really good job of uh, compensating for that um yeah. this week this this post was necessary i think i made myself clear last week that there were so many questions the post just lifted so many questions There's, the people were like 30 30 crafting and theorizing about mm -hmm. the all the things that they said, because th this post was needed. Yeah, most I most definitely completely agree. And uh, and all, I mean, one of the basic things that they did not even mention was the item deck itself. Like, they threw a bunch of information at us and didn't even say if the item deck rules are the same, if if it's still three max items, like three max copies of each item, if it was nine cards. But they say this time around that it's going to be ten cards. So, I, I actually was thinking about this yesterday and I, I wonder why they chose to put 10 inside now. Um, it must be some maths uh, and odds reason to, to, to do that. Not, I cannot reach not it. Not just but... 10, not just 10. The thing is, they even they, you're locked to how many of each tier you can have. Sure. And you, you were you were never locked to, you could have like all all your items could be well, super expensive. Do they say that, locked. do they say that you are locked to tier because I'm not sure that they, did they say that. Currently, the number of items added per tier is four out of ah, tier one, but, three out of tier two. But that's the that's the secret shop random items that they will add to your deck, though. So so let, let's go through through what they say in the in the thing. Basically, the first off, they say that they are rechanging the UI and they make a new picture. And uh, again, they wanted to change and rename all these keywords that they, they mentioned. That they wanted to do that to to go away from the initiate get initiative and etc but now it's become a, becoming a, a slight mess so i hope that, i hope we get some some uh, some order in terms of uh, keywords and so on but basically now instead of invest they wrote earn in the shop and instead of um, what was the other one instead of purchase they write they write shop um, and 
Yeah, so there's a little sketch. I think everyone's seen that by now. Interestingly, they, they write plus five gold on the urn. It should really be plus three gold. So I'm assuming this example is a shop of level three because otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be getting five. But um, yeah, one of the things that was the most confusing um, and myself included, I, I didn't really understand. I had to read it multiple times and discuss it with other people to understand how the... Yeah how the, the, the items popping up in the shop were working. So they, they have this paragraph called populating the shop. And they start off by saying, like I mentioned before, that your deck now consists of 10 cards. Now they, they don't say, well, they do say there are no tier restriction on the items. So your, your deck can have whatever amount of um, tier one, tier two, tier three uh, items okay. that you want, but um, minimum 10 cards. Well, actually, they don't mm. specify minimum, but like in Artifact 1, it was minimum 9. You could put as many items as you wanted inside. There was no limit. So, well, actually, now that I say that they clarified it, this is a small question, but I suppose this is a minimum of 10 cards. In any case, you add this, those 10 cards and then added to those 10 cards, there will be 11 items that are randomly added, um, but you can actually, yeah, you can actually press your your deck list button to see which 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 items were randomly added to your deck at the beginning of the game and those items are what you were mentioning tier one will be four items tier three uh, tier two three items tier three two four and five one of each so that's 11 items in total that get shuffled in with your 10 own items of your choosing and then occur uh, accordingly to the tier of the of the shop they will it will show you three so mm -hmm. theoretically, it could be that you don't even see one of uh, one of your items in the shop, but um, the, the odds are pretty good that that uh, you should see. So they say roughly half of the items available at any time will be from the decks that you constructed. Um, <clears throat> so basically, this is just clarification and cleaning up. One thing to say, mm -hmm. uh, I think importantly, though, is that they took out the reroll button. I think this is a uh, this is personally, of course. Again, it's difficult to say. I haven't played the game, but I feel that taking out the reroll makes the game feel less like Underlords, and I, I think overall it's good because I don't want the the I don't really want the shop to feel like a side mini game. You know what I mean? Not just that. It's like that. It's mentality of like casino mentality. I mean, just another reroll. It might be the next one. And when you go, when, when you notice, you already spent like ten gold rerolling for an item. So it's just buy an item. If it's not the perfect item, maybe the second the second item that comes after might be better. Um, the thing with reroll is, I think sometimes you just get lost. And a lot of people that played uh, Underlords or other games like it. Will, will, will notice this that sometimes you end up re-rolling too much and spending useful gold on, on mm. rerolls when you could have just bought one or two heroes and waited for the next turn yeah uh, i mean i'm not sure if it's a, a good argument to make but i think for example um newer players probably would be like more prone to maybe re-rolling when it was not necessary and that might cause unnecessary frustration to to some players so I, I kind of I in my thoughts I was wondering if having the reroll would not lead to an unnecessary source of frustration of course the theoretical argument is that rerolling would reduce frustration because if you are looking for an item and you don't see it the reroll will help you find that item but um yeah I don't know so it's interesting, but I personally, I, I think the shop that they showed us last week was pretty overwhelming. And I think making it just, just cleaning it up. Yeah. Just cleaning it up the shop a little bit, I think already helps. Um, and again, I will make the point that I did last week, which was they didn't want a lot of math in the shop. And they complained that the original shop, the 1.0 shop was, um, confusing for new players right i think that that's the wording that they used they said it was confusing for new players so again this new version wasn't really correcting those problems which kind of surprised me because because i mean they made the bullet point list of things that they wanted to approach and i felt like it was not perfect but yeah the main thing i want to say is that I, i'm really happy that they we i mean we keep getting confirmation that they are listening to what people are saying on reddit and what people are writing them in emails and um and i think that's good i mean it can be <laughs> it, 
it can become dangerous, but I think overall it's good that they are listening and uh, and going with uh, with what they feel is the correct uh, interpretation of what people say, right? They don't want to make the same mistake twice, right? Because the, they were really shut down to community feedback the first time there was a beta and the first time Artifact came out. And that general also generated a lot of uh, flaming on, uh, on Reddit from people saying that they weren't evil, uh, they weren't able to test the game and, and participate on saying if that would work, if it wouldn't work. So why, why make the same mistake twice when you can just see what, what mm -hmm. people think of all the general ideas you're, you're, yeah. you're putting out? No, I think, I think you have to give them praise and also looking at what they did with Underlords. I, I'm not super involved with the Underlords community, but um, I have the feeling that people are relatively happy with the the communication and how Valve has been approaching that side of their uh, player base. So yeah, if we can get yeah, that. That, that, was also the, but that was also dangerous, right? Because I remember um, people were like spamming Reddit that they hated the jail mechanic, for example, on Underlords, they hated it, or at least a, a big chunk of the community was on Reddit saying that they hated it, they, they wanted it out. Mm -hmm. And then they did a patch where they removed jail, and the next day, the, the like the next day, people are like, "Oh my God! Now the game is just it's unmanageable. It's we need we yeah. need jail back. We need jail." And uh, okay, so people make up your mind. So yeah, uh, I, it's it's okay to listen to the community, but uh, with a grain of salt. Yeah, of course, always. And you, I mean, you have to. They are human. They're gonna make mistakes. So it's also normal that sometimes. It's easy to have a, a small group of players making a lot of noise. And that is also visible in Artifact because there's a, a small community of long haulers that make a lot of noise and probably don't represent the majority of people. Um, so it, it might be difficult for them to actually know exactly which measures to take, uh, which not. So, I mean, there has to be some degree of uh, gut feeling there, I, I presume. One point that I wanted to make also that um, that I've come to kind of realize with the, with the shop is um, that most likely you're never going to be buying something on round one, right? You need to get basically two hero kills. Either you have a bounty hunter, which presumably will give you 10. Uh, we still don't know exactly how much a, de a, a kill, a hero kill is worth, but we're all assuming it's five. It but might happen. I mean... You might have a spell that deals damage to a hero and it's faced against another hero and you might get uh, a kill. Hmm. Well, presumably if you, if you are unlucky and your heroes line up in mid lane and the flop and then you get a kill on your safe lane, I guess then you could go up to 3 creeps plus 10 to 13 gold. But I think most of the time, well, according to the statistics of the mid lane, you could say probably 60% of the time it's not going to happen that you buy a couple of items in the first round. So probably most round first round people are just going to be either either upgrading or earning, most likely earning, mm -hmm. depending on. Well, the, uh, there's also that card. Uh, there's also the mine card that gave you three gold. Yeah, we um, haven't seen how if uh, or how yeah, they've reworked. The question yet. is, will they, will they bump it up and give it more gold? Will they remove it? Will they rework it? Because if you mm. play one of those mines, you might get like 10 gold on the first. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting thought, round. right? Because I mean, now you get more gold. So would they would they nerf the card or would they? They probably would just make it cost a bit less. And I'm not sure if it would give the same amount. Would be interesting. I guess if you get a kill in the safe lane, drop a mine and get the three creeps, then you're up to 11 gold. Yeah, it will be interesting. In any case, I presume that most decks are going to be either just earning or upgrading round one, depending on whether they're going for a late game plan or an early game plan. Um, and that's probably going to be mathematically solved, but it's just mm -hmm. it's just all the ramifications that uh, progress from the for the for the following rounds that are going to be more in, more interesting, I, I, I presume. So, uh, where were we? In the middle of all of it. Yeah, so basically every time you upgrade the shop, uh, we discussed this last week, then they will just shuffle the next tier items into your deck and you get the, the adequate percentage or odds of, of, of mm -hmm. them showing up. Um, the one thing uh, that is important that I did not say is that since they took out the reroll, now every time you buy an item, an extra, another item shows up. 
as it was in the yeah. first game, right? So you, you could just cycle by buying items. At, so at that's least cool. that's what we take from the text. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then uh, another another noticeable thing is the, the the amount of cards from each tier. So the probability of getting a randomized item is way, way, way bigger in the first two tiers compared to the rest. So if you have like two tier five cards in your deck, there's only one tier five card is going to be added. So sure. you, you always have like two out of three chances to get the card that you want from your deck and not the random card. Mm. It looks like they are really protecting against uh, against people hitting those late game items, right? I mean, to get the tier five item right now, you have to upgrade the shop four times, 20 gold. And then you get one item in there. I mean, if you have tier five items in your own item deck, they will also be added, right? So you can you can compensate that by by uh, by your own deck. But still, if 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 you're just looking for that one random tier five deck, it's going to be pretty low odds. Or otherwise, or otherwise, you're going to have to buy a lot of items until you see it. Where, is, where did you see that you have to level it up four times to, to twenty? Well, we start at tier one, so you need to tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five. That's four upgrades. That's yeah, what I'm assuming. What do you mean? You're, you're you're still assuming that you only need to press once on the upgrade button to go a level up. Will it only be once? Will it be more? I don't know. I think that upgrading once, just pressing one time upgrade and going from level one to level two is just, that's just too easy, too fast. But it has to be because what else do you mean? Like they would just upgrade and go to tier five? No, not like that. I, I mean, let's just say you need to spend five gold to upgrade. Okay. What I mean is maybe from level one to level two, it's five. From level two to level three, it's ah, 10. Okay, sure. From level three to level four, is 15. I don't know. Well, they said that so the gold goes down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so if it would be more expensive, I would, I, I would personally assume that they would have told us this. But they did say that the price to, to upgrade will, will go down. So, so I guess if the, if, if the upgrade cost would go, go up from tier to tier, then you could potentially wait longer to let the price drop. But I, I mean, I think by now this is the second economy post. I think they would have, that's something that's relatively important. I think they would have, they would have said that. So in your opinion, it's always just a press once and upgrade and in, you're locked until the next turn to upgrade again. That I don't know, that they have not specified. In my opinion, you should be able to upgrade multiple times in one turn. But they might want to lock that behind a turn uh, lock. But uh, personally, again, they have not said anything about that. So personally, I think if you have 20 gold, you should be able to upgrade four times in a row. Um, and if you want to save some money or if you're planning to delay the game until longer, you can just do it slower and save money because it will be cheaper. That's my, that's my assumption right now. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Well, I'll have to see it, but I just don't think that being able to power level the shop in one go uh, will be... I mean, 20 gold is a lot, man. I don't know, it's four hero kills? 20 gold, 20 gold is two turns. Well, it, it really depends, right? I mean, if you're playing creep protecting heroes like Treant Protector, you're, um, you're already denying gold to your opponent. If your heroes are really beefy, they will die less. I, I mean, you will you will for sure make twenty gold throughout the game. It's just a question of how how fast, right? Um, and then if you are if you are constantly upgrading, then you will not be able to purchase as many items. So it's um, well, I think that's kind of some somehow the beauty of the mechanic. But until we play it, really, it's really difficult to, to get a sense and a feeling for for how it's going to be, right? So um, that's basically the meat of it. That's the gist of it um, for this economy continued uh, or let's shop continued posts. Uh, they clarify um, all these points. Um, ah, also something interesting that they clarify is that if you buy everything in the shop, a random tier one item will show up. Don't, don't imagine that's going to be happening uh, uh, very much. Although, although imagine you make a deck with uh, a very aggressive game plan where you never plan to upgrade, you could potentially just buy out all the tier one items and never upgrade. And so it will just keep, the game will just keep providing you more tier one items, I think. Right? 
that's interesting. I mean, I don't know how tier one items, how good they are in comparison to the other tiers, right? Uh, and that's also part of the discussion that we've been having on the Discord and so on is like, yeah. how, how easy is it to balance the items when they are all costing the exact same, like 10 gold? They all have to cost 10 gold. So it becomes pretty difficult to say balance an ability like force staff, which seems pretty good with other abilities that do completely different effects. It might not be necessarily very easy to balance. So I personally would like to see them move away from this fixed 10, 15, 20 gold thing. Um, if necessary, I guess they could adjust also the, the mana costs on the items. But um, again, this is without playing, this is really very speculative. Yes, I guess, I guess it, the way you're, you're saying it, it, it can actually work because the, the item price is already a gatekeeping because you spend 20 gold to put the, the shop on level 20 and then level four, which will make items cost 30 or is it more? Um, last tier, tier five is 30, yeah. So even if you power level, then you need another 30 gold just to buy an item. So that's already gatekeeping in a certain way. Oh, certain for sure. I made a little video uh, last week. Um, yeah, I, I, I saw Yeah, it. and I, without doing absolutely nothing else uh, and without counting hero kills, which is, of course, a big uh, part of the economy, you would take eight to nine rounds to reach that. So really a lot. And then even after getting to tier five on the shop, it would not be absolutely guaranteed to see the tier five items anyway. So it will be much, 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 much harder to make like a, <coughs> an economy deck, it seems to me. Or if you do make an economy deck, it will be much harder to, to see the items that you want um, at a, like a broken velocity or something like that. Yeah. They they haven't they haven't spoken about this yet at least that uh, that I recall, but they did they did say they wanted the games to feel a bit faster right or at least they're hinting I, that hinting that the rounds I do wonder if are faster, you kill a sure. hero now if you if you hit if you kill a hero are we still going to wait the the artifact 1.0 turns that we used to wait for the hero to deploy again or not yeah, again these are I think. They haven't said, but I think these are all things that they would have said. Um, if it changed? I think they would have clarified that, man. They, they showed us uh, already gameplay scenarios and everything, and they talked so much about the deployment. If um, if one of those things had changed, I, I, I just have to assume they would have told us. It would be a strange thing to leave until the end, right? So just, just before, just before we, we keep moving on, <laughs> I think we get asked the same, not the same question, but it's, the, it's a, a recurring topic of when we think the game is going to release. It, it always depends on Valve time and normal humanity time. Uh, if, you, if you look at the good times to, to release games, it's when most people are either at home or not in vacations. And looking at the current state of the world, I'd say three three quarters of the world is like at home. So now would be a perfect time. But I'd still say that we might be expecting two to three months, maybe, until we see a better. Yeah, I I think months. I cannot. I I I'm, I personally don't care. We've waited long enough. I just want the final product, the end product, to be good. I don't care really how long we have to wait. Um, and if they are listening in the meanwhile, even, I mean, the longer, the better, because it means we have more time to, to kind of digest the things they give us and process the information and give feedback. So actually, no, it uh, depends. It's a beta. So I, sure. I'd rather they launch the beta like in two months per se, and keep the beta going for like two months or maybe a little bit more well, just to get constructive feedback and change stuff. I think you have to be careful though, because the beta will most likely be open, right? In terms of people being able to stream, I presume. Okay. We don't know. I don't know if it's going to be open. If, well, you, you mean if people have NDAs? Yeah, because NDAs, Valve's NDAs always bite them back in the ass. There's always leaks and nothing ever gets really done about it. And I don't see what the point is even of them making NDAs when we know stuff is going to leak. And imagine that they, they give us a beta where everything is really unfinished. And and even, even worse is they already kind of promised that the beta was going to give randomly, right? So randomly means 
any little asshole that is around there gets access to the beta and even if there's an NDA behind it, what does it matter? People are just going to stream it and talk about it and so on. And so if it's kind of an, what I'm trying to get at is if it's an unfinished product and it doesn't look really pristine and really, really perfect, the haters are just going to hate on the game again and it's going to be probably overall well, negative. That's unavoidable. That's unavoidable. Well, what I've Even always... If the game is perfect, there's always people that are going to hate the game. Ah, that's clear. That's clear. But what I always felt since the game since the game went to long haul mode is when they come out, when it comes out to the public, when people stream it and so on, it has to be full of new features and it has to look really, really good. I don't think they can come out with a half finished product and say, hey guys, let's test this. They can do that. They can say, let's test this, let's make a beta. But when they give us the beta, personally, I think they don't have so much room to to fuck around, man. I think they need to give us the single player already in a good shape. They need to give us the tournaments in a good shape, the spectator in a good shape. And uh, yeah, ideally workshop and other things. But I think it needs to come out in a really good state. And then from there, they can listen to, to player feedback and change stuff. But <laughs> imagine they, they give us something with placeholder art and unfinished stuff and bugs and so on. And people start streaming that. It's, uh, I don't think it's going to end well, personally, personally. Oh, bugs, you're always going to have something, even if it's minor or not. That's it's, clear. It's a, beta, it's a beta. So uh, placeholder art would be cool. Come on. We all love placeholder art. So yeah, yeah, no I mean, one was gonna be, no, one, <laughs> no one's going to be toxic about <laughs> placeholder art. Don't get me wrong. I love the placeholder art and I don't mind the placeholder art. I just mean from a global sense. If they give us the game and people are going to be allowed to start streaming it or potentially leaking it if it's not allowed to be streamed, I think it should be looking really good already, you know, and not be looking kind of shitty. But man, I'm not a game dev, so uh, I don't really know the answer to, to these things. But I, I would rather, personally, would rather wait longer until they have the sense that they have a, a good product. Um, and JC Orion in, in chat just actually pointed out that there's this Reddit thread where um, where Eric Thames made a post talking about the feedback getting in the email and that the, the range of email that they get is actually really broad and a lot of people who don't speak English and don't come to Reddit also send feedback through email. So. So he says yeah. basically that the tone of stuff that is, gets discussed on, on Reddit is way, way different from the from the email feedback. There's also there's also a post uh, from Eric. I don't know if uh, if you saw it, where someone pointed out that uh, I wish we didn't get to see this, and because um, now we know it's going to take a lot. And, and Eric was like, I, "I don't get your point." And they go like, "If it's not set in stone, if we're still deciding these things, it means it's going to take a long time until the beta is out." And Eric says, if we had all these things set, there wouldn't be much need of a beta, now would it? Yeah. So yeah. It kind of it kind of hints a little bit, and that's why I think in like in the, in the next two to three months we might see mm -hmm. better. Yeah, because uh, if if they're already revealing the, these types of information, I expect that uh, in the next three months tops we might get uh, the beta, even if closed beta. Uh, I, I expected, well, I, I'd say three months, but, but I could be wrong, but I just think that with all the amount of information that we're getting out, maybe three months might hmm. be something. I think that's a cool assessment. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. So they uh, top off the, the post uh, because there was not really any new content or well, besides uh, a few details and they are the top of the post by showing us a lot of uh, new cards and items and some of them i think are pretty spicy but but before you go there they 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 talk about rarity which was something yep. that we already we we like talked about on the the second or third post that mm -hmm. Pointed out, but I noticed the symbols were different. So, what it's important to see here is that the concept of rarity is completely different from Artifact 1.0. Yeah, for sure. So, what they say is that the cards with the gray common look or or, or uncommon look, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. basically are the cards that everyone will have unlocked at the beginning of the game, and then the second group uh, are the green cards that you will then. Uh, unlock 
unlock further on. Something that uh, I actually went around to look afterwards was also that there's other colors. So this implies that there's mm -hmm. multiple levels of unlocking, um, which is already making me... Necronomicon had the green symbol, which is uh, one of those unlocks that they say they're in greens. Yeah. I wonder if some of these things will be unlocked by playing single player, but I think actually they said in one of the previous posts that it doesn't matter how you play the game, you can unlock the cards uh, anyway, the way you want. So, yeah, I was just going to say something that would be wrong. But, um, Is yeah, it, there's... It's probably hours invested after X hours mm. or something? I don't know, man. It might just be a number of games or number of uh, wins or numbers of... Mm. Who knows? Um, how, do, how does the Underlord's Pass progress? I played a bit of that. I guess... You just get XP. You play a game, you get XP. Yeah, so you, you just mission, play... You get, get, like, super XP. That's about it. Okay, so it's pretty brain dead. Um, no, it's not. Uh, they have also a, like an achievement system. If you after you play X games, you get uh, like a little XP boost. So it's like it's like Dota Plus, like you already said. If you do this amount of um, if you do this amount of tests, mm -hmm. um, you get uh, more XP. No, you know that I love Dota Plus. So if it's anything similar to Dota Plus, mm -hmm. I will be I will be very happy. But um, I think I, I think I did you last. Did you lost me for a second there? Mm, I think I did actually. My my OBS seems to say that I lost a little bit. Yeah, I was just basically saying if it's anything like Dota Plus, I love Dota Plus. Um, I think it would be very very good if it's anything closer to to Dota Plus. I haven't but, played our uh, Underlords for a long long time, so when I stopped playing, that was how it worked. You had like you had three daily quests. That will give you more XP. If you just played games, you'd get normal XP. And then you have like achievement system, uh, like um, play a hundred games and you get a, a little chunk of XP and mm -hmm. do this and you get more XP. So uh, we already talked a little bit about, about this on our Discord channel. And quests is something most people don't like because uh, let's, for example, say, ah, play three games as a mono black. And I hate playing mono black, for example. Yeah. I don't hate playing mono black but it's just i do hate it so i have a quest that i just hate and i don't want to do it but i have to do it because i want more xp because it's going to give me those sweet sweet sexy cards that i want to unlock so sure. I, I really like the 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 after doing x things you just get xp yeah. like play 10 games get it get get xp play 50 games get xp uh, i can see that when yeah. i play 10 play 10 green cards and get xp for example i don't have a strong feeling about that uh, what i can tell you is for example in magic arena it was absolutely horrible because it's it's exactly what you were saying yeah play uh, kill someone with a black deck and it's like okay you can reroll the quests like one i think it was one quest per day you could reroll or yeah. whatever but it's just like do I have to do this? Because that's not really what I logged in to the game to do. <laughs> um, so it, to me, it often leads to a bit of um, feels bad. And at least in Dota Plus, there is so much stuff that it's not really a problem. Because <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I, I, what I wanted to point out, and I keep getting derailed by my own brain, is um, so there's a gray logo and you've got the green that you've mentioned and we've already seen before um yeah like one of the creeps has a green one for example here and uh, there's also a blue symbol and there's also a purple symbol so that implies there's at least uh four uh well one is the gray right so you can unlock blue green and purple cards mm -hmm. um so yeah i guess that gives you a sense already for the for the potential level of progression that is going to come out but um yeah, there's so many directions that battle pass or, or progression systems can take. It's not really it's not really worth losing um, much time thinking about that. The important thing is the yeah. game, and then if we like the game, it will be easy to unlock um, to unlock cards and so on. All right. Let's so, look at those items. Let's look at these items, man. Uh, do you have a favorite, or do you want to start? Uh, you can, let's go face boots right face boots so this was a like a clearly a crowd favorite in 1.0 one of the best items in the game it used to cost five gold and now it's costing five so face boots now costs one mana costs 10 gold and it's still an hp item which provides three hp 
There's an active, a two round uh, cooldown active that costs also one mana to activate and it says swap this hero to another position. So presumably, obviously, you can now swap to empty positions when it was, when, I mean, mm. before in you had to have another unit to swap, you could not swap into an empty spot. Presumably now you can. So, but the, the thing is from the way they word it, it doesn't look like you can swap with another character. I think you can. I think you can. You can still, because uh, the way the way it's 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 worded now, it just swap this hero to another position. I think I if the know, position is occupied, it will just swap as it used to, and if it's empty, it won't. Um, does it say in the text? It says the switch from swapping with an ally to swapping with mm -hmm. any slot gives more options. Yeah, so if it gives more options, it's implied that... Uh, so it just changes with anything, yeah. be it an ally or not. Yeah, okay. you, so you used the, to be able... This, they made it better. Yeah, basically it's a, it's a strict buff in the, in the sense of its ability, although it now costs one mana. It's still a two-round cooldown, uh, and it provides a little bit less HP, because we've seen, I think, it's a trend now that HP seems to be more expensive. Um, Take that with a grain of salt as well, because obviously now all items have abilities, and so it's kind of a more difficult to say exactly what the price of HP is. But overall, because cards have have more abilities, uh, it seems like HP overall is is a bit more expensive. At the same time, you're generating more gold, so this is still not so easy to to assess. But it's a tier mm -hmm. one item, so I think it's still going to be a very good item. Uh, both for yeah, it's even better now so yeah both for aggressive decks trying to hit the tower or for decks that are simply trying to get hero kills um, and potentially even for decks where where you want to just move away now because since you can now move to empty positions i think face boots also becomes a better defensive item in a way mm -hmm. since you can avoid getting killed right um it's like I said, they just made it, they, it, the item was already decent and now they made it good. Yeah. So now uh, they show us the version of... The most, uh, the most hated item. Yeah, one of for sure one of the most hated items uh, of, of 1.0. Um, I mean, it, it, had, it certainly had its place. There was a lot of decks that tried to abuse Klazerim Hourglass, but... Um, I think they've certainly made it look weaker this time around. So again, one mana item, 10 gold, still an HP item. And once again, for 10 gold, you get those three HP. And the text now reads, plus two lock to any extra cards your opponent draws each round. So it used to be that you would plus one lock any cards that your opponent would draw. And now it mentions specifically extra cards your opponent draws each round. So it doesn't lock you from your natural draws or your top decks, if you will. But if it if it locks, then it locks plus two. So it feels like now it's going to be a much more niche card, like to counter combo decks or to counter blue decks that go off uh, go off through card advantage or drawing a lot of a lot of cards. Um, feels overall think, like a nerf you, to me. Do you, do you think um, it's they, they, they put it as a tier one item. Mm -hmm. So the, this can actually be played very early in the game. Like, do you do you feel that this should have been pushed like in tier, tier three or something? I don't know if tier three wouldn't be too late. So imagine that you're getting, I mean, it's hard to, to, to assess how fast you can get to tier three items, right? So that's the problem. Because if you're playing against blue, for example, and you want to prevent them from getting from drawing cards to get to Annihilation, for example. Um, yeah. You presumably would want to reach or to see your Klazerim Hourglass before round uh, round four or the round of six mana, right? Because you needed to drop it before to prevent the draws. So, and that was often quite difficult in 1.0 because 10 gold was significantly more than it's going to be now. So, I don't know. I think putting it at tier three probably would be too late, potentially. I don't know. Because the, the thing is not, <clears throat> you used to be able, if you're playing against mono blue, for example, you'd have mana for three lanes and you'd be able to draw cards in like almost every lane if you wanted. So mm -hmm. now with the mana restriction, 
being able to play this, let's just say on the third turn, where you where you will have like five to six mana tops for all the lanes. So I don't know. It just feels like two locked because it went from one lock to two locks. Two lock is, is really it's it's is really annoying. That I will say, yeah. Two lock is Either really that annoying. Or is can I mean, if you have cards that make you and your opponent draw cards, you can totally screw your opponent and just buy a card. That is true. That is true. That yeah, is, you... Two lock is just so painful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but, I mean, we, yeah, we I, obviously I, don't I, know how many draw cards there are going to be. We don't know how good like Salamene combo is going to be, if that still, still even exists, because yeah. That was one of the main things against blue was preventing them from going off or blue or blue green. Uh, any any combo variation with Salamen uh, Salamen is uh, with incarnation. Uh, the the original class Rima Argas was very good against this. Will presumably still be good against it, but the problem is, do you put this in your deck? I mean, this feels like an, an item that you're just gonna want to get from Secret Shop RNG. I mean, I, I, unless it's like you say that there are cards that will make also your opponent draw cards as a as a drawback, if you will, that would this be is a cool. This way. is going to be a combo card. I think this is going to be see potential for, for, <laughs> for combo cards. It's possible. There would be there would have to be some really busted draw cards though. But um, so I'm I'm not sure. But um, I, to me, it feels more like a secret shop sideboard card if you will if you get lucky and you get this in a good matchup it's going to be a good draw a good buy against uh, certain archetypes Actually, you, do get, you do get four tier one so it might it might be in the pool yeah yeah uh, i mean i don't know how much room there's going to be to put random items against matchups uh, in your own item deck but uh, that will depend a lot of on meta so, on the meta so yeah all right um, and now a rework of Niktasha's Guard. This was a 25 gold item, uh, one of well, basically one of the most expensive expensive items in the original game, and once again costs one mana to deploy or to play. It's an armor item. For 30 gold, you get plus one armor and uh, one round active, so you can activate it every round. Uh, and it costs also one mana. Reduce adjacent enemies to one health. They are stunned rooted and feeble so this seems pretty strong actually uh, no not, not broken at all <laughs> I, I mean i don't think it's broken because it costs 30 but it, it, i mean this seems very very strong um on the other hand you deploy this they are rooted stunned and feeble but then like once the heroes redeploy they won't really redeploy in front of you right so um Will be interesting. It looks like a fun card. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm but gonna when you say adjacent, it's the it's like the three cards in front, right? Yeah, but there's five slots. So if you're gonna deploy a hero in that lane, you won't deploy it in front of of Niktasha's guard, right? So. No, but if you're deploying and you have the hero with Niktasha's guard, you can just sure. change the pace of the game. That implies that your hero died. Though. <laughs> I think <laughs> if I think if you drop a Niktasha's guard, you really want to win the game. Uh, so. I don't know. I, didn't, didn't they say last week that they didn't want to make any item that felt like it would change, like be so strong to change the entire <laughs> game? Well, I mean, I think the 30 gold items have to be game ending items. Uh, yeah, this, that's true. This feels very strong. At the same time, it feels slightly meme ish. Uh, I think the feeble and the root are very strong. Um, it is also possible that if you have a hero, say that your hero is just. Like not straight up in front of, of your enemy, but like on the slot next to it. If you drop the Niktasha's guard, then he's just rooted there forever. Then he doesn't die and doesn't redeploy. So that's kind of better. Oh, he's, he's gonna he's gonna die in the, on that same turn if you don't kill the hero with Niktasha's. Because if you're activating it, one health means it's gonna die that turn. Period. Yeah, if there's something in front of it, yeah. Sure. And they're also stunned, so the stun effect is potentially also very good. Um, but I cannot believe this. I don't think this looks like a constructed deck card. This looks like a maybe draft, but looks looks a bit meme-ish for me. It looks fun. Looks fun. Looks fun and looks it, strong. It looks, it looks really strong. I don't know if it's gonna be just for draft. But it, well, if it, if it if this shows up in draft, you're most definitely gonna pick it because this is just insane. 
Well, yeah, I remember how many I, I'd lost so many drafts where I got Horn of the Alpha and never got to make enough gold to buy it, man. <laughs> so often and that's that that's an issue. I I would always I was I would always go for the debate. The Horn of the Alpha was always debating me in draft, but it was fun, so it was worth it. <laughs> so let's uh, let's look at some at some heroes uh, now. Prelex, this was a. Uh, I would say one of my favorite heroes to play in draft. I really, really liked Prelex. Prelex is still a blue hero. Uh, the art looks the same and gray icon. It's a 2-4, so it used to be a 2-5. So there's a slight reduction on the HP. And uh, it and now I'm... yeah, it now has a reactive ability called Gather the Faithful. When Prelex deploys, um, you redeploy your leftmost melee creep. Okay, so she comes into play, you get a melee creep on the left, and what's going to happen is you deploy to the right instead of the left, and you deploy mega creeps instead of melee creeps. Now, as we've seen before, melee creeps are 1-1 one, one creeps, and the mega creep is a 2-3 mega creep. So significantly stronger than a normal creep. And then her card is um, incidentally still an improvement, so we get the confirmation that improvements still work. Barracks, still yeah, costs 3 mana. And now reads Aura, your creeps have plus one, plus one. Hmm. Ah. Now, the question is, Barracks used to have like the little arrows, you know, which meant you could have played it on any lane. Hmm. And hmm. now they don't. Um, so will this be like all the board, just that lane where you play it? Is it lane locked? Because you, you don't you no longer have the the side uh, the side arrow saying you could play this on any lane. What do you mean by the side arrows in the in the middle ball, right? Is that what you mean? Where you have the little castle symbol? Yeah. Didn't you used to have like arrows by the side? Not the not the not the ball. The little castle symbol below the three you used to have like these little arrows that meant that I you can't could recall, play on but I, I can't recall. I'm trying to what I'm looking at. I'm I just googled the old card and I, there was arrows um, in front of the five mana symbol. At least in the version that I'm looking at, there were two little mana arrows. Cost. There were two little arrows left and right uh, around the mana cost, and then there were three little spikes around the improvement ball in the middle. Okay, chat, help me out. Uh, some people yeah. are already telling me that there's like little arrows to the side. So it meant it was cross lane, just like when you right. had like uh, other Good cards spot. other than this. So my question here is like, is our oh, God damn it, aura <laughs> going to be like table wide? Is it going to be so it's is it are they restricting? Uh, the, you can only play it because now you can play it on any lane, right? Yeah. You, you get a, a global vision, but does the hero have to be on that lane so you're able to play in that? Because it's like you say, we already saw the, the Mirana mm -hmm. card and it has the little uh, arrows, I think. Yeah, it looks like it's uh, like you're saying, it's probably just lane only, right? Um, but it's going to be locked to the lane. Yeah, they haven't spoken about improvements uh, up until now, but uh, yeah, chat is kind of confirming what you're saying. So it's possible that you can only play it where there is a. So either you can play it wherever there's a blue hero, which would make sense. Mm -hmm. And if there's no blue hero in the lane, you cannot play it cross lane. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a really good pickup. That's uh, that's really good. I didn't notice that at all. I don't think I ever even noticed that the improvements had the arrows around the mana cost. <laughs> so this this kind of this kind of balances the. It's gonna. It's giving you the lore of mega creeps, right? Because you get mega creeps on e not on all lanes at the same time, but you get lane by lane while you do play mm -hmm. stuff. So if you have three barracks, you can actually put mega creeps in all the lanes eventually. So it kind of it kind of plays with the lore of Dota. So um, yeah, yeah. Man, Prelex that, that aura is totally making mega creeps on you. Prelex on looks like a, an absolute beast in, in for sure in limited. This is this looks really really strong in limited. And uh, in constructed, I'm not sure, but like when I mean, you remember, when yeah. you had Kana in the lane, mm -hmm. you always knew, okay, I cannot abandon this lane. I cannot leave Kana alone, or I'm gonna, I'm gonna get screwed on this lane. So now the the way I look at, they did that the prelex. I, I don't yeah. think you can uh, you can ignore <laughs> prelex in a lane for, for from now. Yeah, on. she feels really strong. She really does. Um, 
yeah, I, I like it. I like it. Uh, and uh, what I was going to say, uh, I lost my line of thought for a second is, I mean, the Mega Creeps, for example, Debbie, Debbie was a 4-3, right? I mean, she's she's going to die to two, to two hits of a Mega Creep. That's like, it's pretty good. Let's not put Debbie in front of the Mega Creeps then. <laughs> well, don't put Debbie in front of anything, basically, I think is the <laughs> bottom line. <laughs> All right, so that's uh, that's Prelex. Man, I think overall, from what I've seen until now, blue and green heroes are just overall the strongest. Like, they seem like they've been buffed the most. The ones that I've seen until now, really... Let's have... make blue great again. <laughs> yeah, man, let's, let's make blue even better again, I guess. <laughs> blue was, I mean, blue was dominant for a very long time. But uh, yeah, now they show us, man, basically everyone's favorite Chad. Dude, do you want to read Axe? Yeah, I'm just looking at Axe and remembering that you yesterday put on our chat like, look how they butchered my boy. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, so Axe, Axe, I got, I got a big white slap right here. He now has three attack, five health, still has two armor. Um, he now has an active ability. Berserker Skull, which was mainly his signature card. Uh, I don't know if this is going to be as good as it used to be. Because uh, uh, he's a, a bit weak now compared to what he used to be. But his, his uh, Culling Blade new signature, um, so they, they, they went and got some more Dota lore. Slay damage enemy hero with three or less health. Repeatable this round. So this is pretty cool because you can go bananas late game if you if you are if you're able to get like two to three uh, targets to, to to three HP and being hurt because mm -hmm. uh, with six mana you can just clean three creeps. The 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 big thing here is uh, and this is well, the important part. It's repeatable. Do, let me interrupt you. Mean? Let me interrupt you just for a second because it says a damaged enemy. A creep is a one one. So if it's damaged, it's dead. So I don't, I don't think you can. Yeah. What? When I say creep, I mean minion. Sure. Okay. Yeah, but not a one. A one one cannot be damaged. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the thing is, it says it's repeatable, but when they say repeatable, oh, yeah. does it mean you sure, can actually sure. play? Like I kill one, I kill another. Does your opponent have like, when you play Culling Blade the first time, does your opponent get to heal something? Does it get to do any actions? Do you get to spam this until you have mana and kill like three to four enemies? So this is this this might be really good or really bad, because if they're they're able to respond to it, it's just I don't know how they're gonna play this. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have the impression that this card is not so so good. So actually, I, I again, Valve Valve is being a bit mean because they try. They are they keep saying that they they want the keywords uh, to be nicer and so on. But their card reads slay, and then my mind just immediately went to slay means kill a creep, and then it says a damaged enemy hero. So we can only use it on heroes. So it has to be a hero. It has to be damaged, and it has to be three or less health. I mean, if you repeat it, it's great, but how many heroes, okay, like, I don't know how many heroes you expect to kill in a lane that you already damaged and that they're going to be three or less health. This could maybe be interesting with Bristleback because Bristleback has the Quill Spray ability or or the new Ignite card that we're going to see, but um, yeah. I'm not so high on it. I think it's not going to be so good. There's more stuff. You imagine, like, if you have the Tinker old signature card on the lane, that's just, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that can happen. All right. But uh, one way if people are saying it doesn't have quick, so it doesn't, it, it should be able to to react. The, open, mm -hmm. the opponent should be able to react. The only way I see this is like you play Culling Blade, you kill something or you slay something, and the card just goes back to your hand and disappears at the end of the turn. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then the other thing to say is I think the Berserker Skull ability looks really cool and it has only a two, a two round cooldown, which seems really OP. But X, I mean, if you beef him up, I mean, if you put him like a, a weapon, because main... two armor is. This is another thing. I, 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 when I saw the card, I was like, okay, so we've been told that armor only works once per turn, right? Mm -hmm. So if you take two damage, you lose those two armor. So when I do Berserker Skull and I fight three targets, 
how how will armor respond to this? Uh, I'm pretty right? sure it would only prevent two damage. It's not going to prevent two from each enemy. <laughs> no way. If that's yeah, what you're yeah, thinking, because the damage is because the damage is done at the same time. Right? I, I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah, the damage should be done at the same time, but the same way that the Debbie, for example, takes armor away, or I mean, I don't know, man. I don't believe that that's going to be the case because also because it's it, not so intuitive. Like, yeah, but it will be. It will be super. It, if that's the case, then I think it's good. Strong. Yeah, if that's the it case, it would be, be super strong for sure. But I, I, I really no. don't believe it. And people keep it, saying it was, it was already super strong. Well, Berserker's he, Call was pretty strong. Berserker's Call was very strong, particularly because you could play it from other heroes, and now you can't. Now you have to Berserker's Call with Axe, and Axe is weak. Axe is literally weak. This is like. X cannot kill a prelex, okay? Um, he hits for three. He's only got mm -hmm. five plus the two armor, so seven. We've seen three is bigger than him. Like, I'm, I, I don't know. I, he's going to take a lot of work to make him... He's going to take a lot of uh, buffs and a lot of equipment to make him work. And I'm not so sure that it's going to be worth it, but we will see. I just don't I think... Mean, I don't. It doesn't seem to me like it's going to be... A dominant card. If you look at if you look at Axe in, in Dota, he's like a what a mid 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 game hero. Um, he can Aside be pretty from... good in the. He can actually he's pretty strong in the early game. Uh, if I if if someone still plays Dota, please correct me. But he used to be very mm -hmm. strong in the early mid game. But he can be quite decent in the late game as well. Yeah. I just think he, they, they 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 you notice that they're going for for a lot of Dota lore. So I don't know if they changed it in a bit to make him like. But it's like you say, he's pretty strong early game because he farms really fast compared to the other guys, but, and has the spinning, the spinning blade and etc. But uh, I just think that he might still be good. The thing that I'm curious about is Berserker Skull was really strong, like you said, because you were able to play from another character. So I'm just really, really uh, curious if they're going to make uh, Legion Commander do exactly the same thing. Because hmm. Duel was able to be played by other characters if they were red, yeah. when Duel is typically a, a thing that only Legion Commander does. So I'm super curious if they're sure. going to make like uh, the Duel uh, to be the the active ability on Legion Commander. Yeah, now. that's actually a very good point. Uh, and and also because his passive ability, ability retaliate, it's retaliation was one of the probably what people have called one of the boring abilities. And also, a lot of times, Retaliate would make the combat math a bit awkward. Yeah, the so, math. Yeah, the math. And so it would go in line to what they've been showing us and what they've been saying to, to probably rework LC to, to do that too, yeah. Um, we, we shall see. But uh, I think for now, we can all you know pay our respects, you know, press F in chat for X, I think. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel right now. <laughs> Um, I, I still think he has potential. Okay, now he's more he's more of a control card than than uh, an aggro card. Yeah, this is okay. This is you you said that and you've just you triggered a rant. I I don't know what they're trying to do with with red anymore because okay, let's look at ogre because he's the next card. Ogre's got two armor. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. This is not the place anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what they are what what they are doing with the color pie of of artifact. Okay, the color pie, the concept of which abilities belong to to which colors, from what they have been see, uh, showing us, seems to be all messed they, up. They gave armor to blue. They gave armor to blue. The red heroes are. Weaker. I think the strongest hero we've seen until now is seems to be Farvan. Farvan's a, a, a beast. Um, the the red has got cross lane mobility. Um, Do black, not forget something. Black has armor forget. as well. It, I feel like they have screwed up the well. Screwed up is the wrong word. They are mixing. They are remixing the color pie, and I cannot still until now understand exactly yeah. which but which mechanics are forget, in which color. Do not forget that heroes from the red pool were super strong because they considered that most of the red spells and other cards weren't that great. So they might be buffing the red cards and making heroes tone down a bit just so the red cards are can actually be decent now instead of just meh. Because mm -hmm. you had like, what, three, four cards? The Legionnaires, uh, you had the uh, Time of Triumph, 
you had the call uh, the the one that put the centaurs which i don't remember spring the trap yeah spring the trap so you had like five six cards that were pretty pretty good mm -hmm. in red in my opinion and then you had meh cards okay. so like they might be toning the heroes a little bit down or maybe they just thought like let's just change it completely and now everyone is able to get armor and, well, and not just uh, it's possible. reds and greens. I mean, I, well, I, I felt like the color pie was quite nice in Artifact in comparison to other games because the items kind of allow you to mix, mac like uh, to mi mix and match anyway, right? Red heroes were really buff and were really strong and so on, but had no mobility. Okay, then you need a blink, you need a face boots and the same could be said for other colors. You know, blue didn't have armor, so if you if you want your blue hero to be a little bit more resistant, you get a you get an armor item, etc. So uh, probably the items that they designed for the call to arms set maybe didn't showcase that perfectly. But I think the that's one of the cool things of the shop is it allows you to to bring it allows you to really cover the the weak spots of each color, right? Um, but yeah, I'm still a bit confused in terms of the of the color pie of 2.0. I hope to get a bit more clarification on that. But um, let's look at Ogre, man. Let's look at Ogre. Ogre Magi, blue hero, two attack for HP and two armor. He still has the multicast reactive ability, but it's been reworked. So no more bullshit 25% multicast. Now it reads, the first blue spell or enchantment you cast from this lane can be repeated this round. And this has a two round cooldown. So great, let me look at his signature spell. Four mana, Ignite. It's no longer an improvement, it's now a spell. Enchant Caster, round starts, deal one piercing damage to each enemy. All right, so his, his reactive ability multicast now combines or synergizes with his own signature spell, which I think is good because it previously didn't. Um, and his reactive ability now is not complete bullshit RNG. You can actually manipulate it a little bit as you want. So uh, I, I can feel the saltiness. I mean, Ogre was one of the best heroes in the game, period, just because you would sometimes win a game simply because you would multicast a dimensional portal or you would multicast a foresight or you were in a really tough spot and you multicasted the Thunder God's Wrath and suddenly you killed all mm -hmm. of the enemy heroes. So. The, yeah, but now you get a guaranteed. Yeah, now you now get a guaranteed. guaranteed. I, and I like it. And I like it. I, I'm. I actually think they this they probably could have gone with something more in this direction in the first game. Probably we know that you know Garfield likes these percentage based RNGs like the Ravage, the Bounty, the Mold, the Ogre the cheating death, whatever. Um, and these cards just cause rage to people. So despite the, the good mathematical arguments behind them, if you want to make a game that survives, Artifact has already proven that if you want to make a game that survives, you cannot do those things because people will just absolutely hate it. Yeah. So most people are going to say he was nerfed. I just, I, to my, in my opinion, I think he was balanced because now he feels like not an unfair douchebag that wins you the lane by himself if you're an RNG god. I feel like the first ogre, the first iteration of ogre was very, very dependent on being on which other blue heroes were, were played with him. Ogre by himself was not very good, but once you pair him with Kana, he has a huge synergy with, with Kana's signature card. Uh, once you pair him with Zeus, once you pair him with, once you put him in a mono blue deck, he's just an absolute beast, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I think, now as a standalone hero, I think right now he's he's got a buff because he's got armor, he's tougher than he used to be, you can control his card, and his spell synergizes with himself, right? Before, you would never put Ogre as a splash or in a two-color deck because there was not enough synergy. And he he saw mainly play in the in the combo decks and in the Salamene decks because you would play Salamene, get the ogre next to it, and you know here we go trying to flip coins. Clown Fiesta yeah. time. Yeah. Now now he can potentially see play by himself without really depending on mm -hmm. Kana and other heroes. So I feel like overall it's probably a, a decent buff on oh, the. On how the... how do you actually feel about the new ignite? It feels very expensive. Um, 
and it feels like it's absolutely very strong if you multicast it, but eight mana right now, it, it's hard to get a scope for how long the games are, right? Eight mana in the first game was a lot of mana, dude. And so, now it's even more because you have only one mana pool. So I don't know if you can dedicate a whole round to trying to play this and... Uh, you don't have to. You don't have to play it on the same round. You'll just have the card in your hand and play whenever you want. So the first blue spell or enchantment you cast from this link can oh, be wait, repeated. It can be repeated they're, this they're, round. Yeah. So you have to. You actually have to play it. Yeah, it's like the X card. If if you don't, it gets repeated. But if you don't use it again, you lose it at the end of the turn. So the card will disappear. So you want you will always want to play like uh, cheap cards. Yeah. So either cheap cards or just make sure you have a ton of mana but uh, without having a good idea of how how many rounds per game they're going to be it's kind of hard to predict how much because imagine you play this and you multicast it you just spend your round eight doing this and then your opponent is like woohoo and he does a ton of stuff so i don't know okay so so i was asking you about ignite for for example uh silver nick uh is saying on the chat that he actually considers ignite to be a buff because now it's mobile and not just stuck to a lane that can be abandoned by the opponent. Yeah. Uh, so it still does upkeep damage, right? Because it's round start, heal one piercing damage to each enemy. Uh, the 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 big the big issue here is you put this on your ogre, and it doesn't do anything uh, this turn. And the old ignite, you yeah. could have put it on the the next lane, and it would do damage mm -hmm. that same turn. Uh, if Ogre dies and has the buff, nothing happens on the next exactly. turn. If you left Ignite on the lane, something would still happen the next turn, even if you the hero died. So it's it's cool to be mobile, but I still think it's it's a big hit on the potential of the of the spell itself. Mm -hmm. So yeah, another good thing is now it's not removable because you could put when it was um, an improvement. Yeah. You right. could destroy it. You yeah. could remove it with, the, with the, the, the Magic Mall or other red cards that you had. Yeah. And now it just sticks to the to the hero and you can blink him whenever you need to blink oh. him to you can lane You can theoretically a... purge it, but we don't know how many purge spells there are going to be. Um, presumably Abaddon is, is still going to be able to dispel stuff. So, I mean, if in one purge, purge effects were very rare in Artifact 1, so... We'll see. We'll see how it's going to be in in two point Yes, but... it is dispellable. It's like nine saying because yeah, people are saying like you can still purge and it's dispellable. Yeah. How many times did you saw people do that unconstructed, for example? Rarely. Like when mono red was very very uh, strong, people would sometimes play Abaddon to counter the TOT because you could dispel the TOT. But that's basically a very corner. That's very a very corner case. That's not something that happened commonly at all. Yeah, but people were playing it because of one card, or maybe like three cards in the meta, mm -hmm. for, for example. Yeah. I don't see people playing that just for, for Ignite. But okay, we'll see. It's, still, it's still dispellable, yes, but it's going to yeah. be harder to have a response for that. That's again one of those sort of things where until you get a look at the collection and play a few games, you won't really have a feel for how good purging yeah. is going to be, right? The so. meta. The meta will stay if it's it's if if we exactly. see a lot of uh, disenchantments and purges. All right, and um, I think that's basically it for this week. Um, I think I'm hoping that next week's we get uh, we keep getting some juicy juicy content, um, and that we keep getting some some more hero reveals because I'm quite enjoying looking at the heroes. And um, yeah, I still really, really kind of hope that they will tell us more about the details of your hand size, card draw, deck size, all these things, um, like the, the, the nitty gritty of, of the rules so we can get an even better understanding of exactly how the game is going to play out. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, otherwise, I don't know, man, I think we can, we can leave it at that. Uh, do you have any, any final uh, thoughts? No, I'm just curious about certain heroes and how they're gonna because all the heroes that we've seen so far there's not a single one that is exactly the same so all the heroes are most likely and this is speculation most likely all heroes were changed so because all the heroes that we've seen 
that were from Artifact 1.0 have been completely changed. Yep. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of curious on uh, how certain heroes are going to be looked at. For example, Legion Commander, like we talked, mm -hmm. uh, is one of them. Uh, I'm 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 going to be I'm I'm curious about uh, if they're going to keep exactly um, what's the name Darkseer if he's going to because how how are they going to change the hero if they're going to change the hero and and keep it. Darkseer, because all the, the, two, the two spells that he had were most likely the signature card for the hero in Dota he's most known for. Unless they're going to make the wall or something, which I think is weird. <laughs> but for and these are just some kind of examples of heroes that mm -hmm. I'm curious to see what they're going to do. About. Yeah, for sure. Darkseer is a very iconic hero. Um, and I mean, normally the big plays in Dota with, with Darkseer involve the, the ability where he pulls everyone together, you know? I don't know the name now. And the wall. So I, the wall, I think, will be very difficult to implement in a, in a card game. But I was actually speculating the other day about Earthshaker, because since now mobility vacuum, yeah, thanks, thanks, chat. Um, vacuum is the name of the of uh, of his ability. Anyway, I was thinking about Earthshaker, for example, and how since now there's a way more mobility between lanes. I wonder if Fisher is going to be like in Dota, an ability that maybe blocks the lane so that like it stuns the heroes it hits and no one can cross over it. You know what I mean? That would be kind of cool. And the, I don't know if the wall could do something similar where you put the wall between the lanes or between some slots. And then if anything crosses between the wall, maybe you create an illusion. But I don't know how good that would be. Probably would be and a bit example, of a nightmare. Can you imagine, can you imagine Nerf Shaker? With, with only having five slots per lane, he got so nerfed on his signature right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, his signature is gonna have to change. But you can also you can also rework that by just saying like instead of one damage, damage for... yeah, something like that. Um, yeah, something like that. Can or 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 maybe it stuns as well instead of just dealing damage. Has a lot. Of, I'm not. I'm not he worried about that. Stunned. He already stunned with the active ability, I'm, which was great. I'm. I'm very honest. I'm very curious, and I like to see the heroes. But the card design is really the last thing that I'm worried about. The card design is the easiest thing to change. What I'm really, really concerned, and what I really want to know about is all the rules and the mechanics, because those are the things that are going to be super, super difficult to change later on once the game is released or once the beta is already super deep. I want I want to know that the rules are good and that we can still maybe adjust some of these rules and some of these things to to make the game the, the best it can be because the rules are what are what are going to make the game the cards you can worry about that later and that's also always what I've said about Artifact 1.0 is like people complained about the cards being bland but dudes that's not a concern because you can change the cards the next set you can do a completely different rework of the cards. The 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 rules though, the rules you cannot change from set to set. So you have to have a very solid a very solid set of rules. And um and that's for now my main concern until we, we got our hands on the prize. Alright, so I think um I think uh, we'll uh, we'll leave it at that um for for this week thank you so much for listening joining in chat um if you are on youtube leave some comments let us know what you think otherwise join our discord come and chat to us about the game and if you're on audio thank you so much for listening subscribe leave a review and uh yeah let's hope for the beta in three months <laughs> all right bye guys <laughs> i will see you guys